Okay, so now we're going to play with the coloring of the individual layers. I am inspired by this cartoon background inspiration, which is a lot pinker, right? But it also has pretty strong purples and blues in the background mountains. So the only really strong color I have in my image are these this blue mountain ridge. So instead of messing with that too much, I'm going to work from the foreground back, just like I did with, with uh, brightness and contrast, to, to play with the color. <laughs> Coloring can make a big difference. So if I know I want it to be kind of pink in the foreground, I guess I might as well start with the pinkest reference I have, which is this one here. And to adjust it, I'm not going to use layer styles by double clicking. So we've learned before. I hear that my mic is muffled, so let me switch to my external mic. Okay, so we learned before that we can use layer styles like color overlay. You can see it there. To adjust colors of layers. Right? But we've done this mostly with shapes and vector content. So the problem with using layer styles when you're compositing is that it treats everything in the layer the exact same way. So there's not a lot of nuance to the coloring. And it's it looks less believable that way. So if I add a gradient, and even if I take that gradient down, you can see it starts to look more like graphic art rather than a believable photographic landscape. And you'll notice that it, it kind of knocks all colors out and all variation out everywhere. And I could spend a lot of time building a more customized gradation with different colors, but then it would, it would again, treat every pixel in this layer the same. So instead of doing it with layer styles, we want to affect the pixels directly. And so this is called a direct adjustment. And so just like when we played with levels, we're going to go up to image. We're going to go to adjustments. And we're going to bypass this whole first set. So in PhotoP and in Photoshop, these first four adjustment options are just for lighting, for lights and darks, for values, so grays, highlights, and shadows. For color, that's what all of these next adjustments are for. And of all of these, I use two of them. So for light adjustments, we use levels. And that's the one I'll always uh, show you through the class. I think it's the, the easiest to use with the most options. And then for color adjustments, we have to use two different ones. And the, the first is color balance, which in many ways is my favorite because it, especially when you're going for believable color, it is about the temperature of the lighting. So I'm going to change the range to midtones, just like we did for levels. It's always safest to play with midtones first. And then I'm going to play with these different sliders. Now, this is a little complicated because it's red, green, and blue. And you wonder, well, I want red, so I want more red. And that makes sense. Oh, sure enough, I have more red. But what it actually means is that every Every pixel on your screen is made up of three different lights in your computer. And those lights are red light, green light, and blue light. These are the light primaries. This is called RGB mode. So that's how we can get millions of colors to appear. They're just different levels of red, green, and blue lights being turned on or off. If they're all turned on at 100%, you get white. If they're all turned off, you get no light, which is black. So I do want to increase the red light a little bit, but I might also want to decrease the green light a little bit to get that more magenta, kind of pinkish tone. And I might want to decrease the blue light a little bit to get a little bit of those warm yellows back in there. So you want to play with your color balance with some subtlety. You don't 
just like with lighting, you don't want to push it all the way one way or the other because then you lose pixel information. And we're going for a believable landscape, even if it's cartoony. So I want to get kind of a, an interesting red that maybe harkens back to my inspiration. So I can do less with the green to get that kind of pink in there, but still believable. And now I can go to highlights, and usually I'll warm up my highlights a little bit by dimming the blues. And then I will go to my shadows, and I will darken my shadows a little bit, cool them down by dimming the red. And then if I want, I can go back to my midtones. Up the red a little bit. I can up the red a, a little bit in the sh eh, no, a little bit in the highlights, but not too much. Yeah, that might be a little much. All right. So remember, I made a duplicate, so you can see these changes. So that's what I had before. In comparison, now that looks really, really dull, and now I have that bright color. Now notice that that's quite different than this, right? So that's with the layer style. So we're not going to use layer, layer styles for this. Instead, we're going to do the direct adjustments, which are found under image adjustments for lighting with levels and for color. And we've done color balance so far. Now that we've done color balance, now I can play with it a little bit more aggressively. And I can do the next color adjustment which I recommend, which is hue saturation. So between these two, you have complete control of the color. Now I usually do hue saturation second because it's the more powerful and it, it makes bigger shifts happen more quickly. And this is true in Photoshop just as it is in PhotoP. So you'll see that you have a range and you can play with the master range, which is all colors within that layer. And then the most powerful tool is the hue slider. So if I just want to push this to a slightly different color, like more yellow, I can push it on the hue slider. But if I go too far, it's going to lose all of its variation. So again, that can be very subtle. Do I want to shift it a little bit more red by going backwards? Or do I want to shift it a little bit more yellow going forward? Maybe a little bit more towards yellow. And then saturation, this is what's unique to the hue saturation one. You're not able to change the intensity of the color with color balance, but you're able to change the intensity of color with the hue saturation adjustment. So saturation means intensity. It means how strong those lights are turned on. And if I take it all the way down, I'll get to a, a gray image. And if I take it all the way up, I will push all of those pixels to their maximum intensity. Neither one is what I want. Instead, it's going to be a little bit in the middle and I think I actually probably want to deaden them a little bit to make it believable and then lightness or darkness I would leave alone and instead play with that with the levels adjustment because this is just an overall lightening or overall darkening so I will keep it right at zero and instead of the sliders you can always just type in your values as well now, don't check colorize unless you want to wipe out all the color. So you, you check colorize when you're trying to add color to something that's black and white. And that is not the case here. Okay. And it's only, it only sets once you hit OK. Otherwise, it's just a preview. So we went from that, and then we used hue saturation to modulate it a little bit to that which in some ways takes it closer to our original, but notice we brought a lot more color into it while keeping it really believable and while not losing the variation in the color exposures. So you can see we have brown pixels, we have orange pixels, we have red pixels, we have light gray pixels. They're all still in there, which is a lot better than if we just used layer styles. All right. So now I have two kind of color notes that I like. I like the blue mountains and I like those red rocks. 
So we can jump around to different layers. I can use my move tool with auto select turned on to jump to different layers in the image, as long as they're not locked. <laughs> and now maybe I'll play with the colors of this one, make it more intensely purple and in the background. And I can make a duplicate like I have been, just to be safe. But I'm going to be directly affecting these pixels. So I'm going to say image adjustments. First, I'm going to play with levels. I think maybe I've already done that, or maybe not. And I'm going to use the mid-tone slider here just to push them a little bit brighter in the mid-tones. So it feels like it's transitioning into the sky a little bit more. And we have a very light sky. And that's all I'll do. OK, and now I'm going to go to Image Adjustments on the same layer and go to Color Balance and play with the temperature a little bit. You see how there's a little bit of pink in there? So I'm going to start with the midtones, and I'm going to dial down the red light. And that will take some of those pinks out. Dial up the green light a little bit, and that will bring some yellows in. And then dial up the blue quite a bit. to about there. Now I can see, well, what if I add some reds back in? And no, I don't want those in the highlights. So now if I go to the highlights, I can play with taking the red down, but really upping the green. And it's a balance of the two. I don't want to lose all reds, but most of them. And then in the shadows, my file is getting pretty big, so photo P is going a little slow for me. But in the shadows, I'm going to try upping the blues. Yeah, I might need to come back to it. There we go. It'll catch up with me. It's a good idea to save your work as you go, especially when it gets slow like this. I'm going to go ahead and close some other programs once it wakes back up. But what you can see, well, my computer is kind of frozen here. You can see that now these colors are starting to work a little bit more believably together than just having the, the one layer that was really intense and saturated. I'm going to let it catch up. I'm going to hit OK, and then I'm going to save it. And then to save some memory, I might go ahead and, and delete the copies that I don't need, which were my safeties. But I noticed my screen recorder has paused, too. So it will help to close some of my other programs I was grading before starting class, so I, I probably need to close all of that up. All right, now we're back. <laughs> so let's save it. I already have it labeled the right way. And then I'm going to delete some of these copies. You have to unlock them in order to delete them. And that will save some memory. This wouldn't be such of a such a concern if you were um, working in Photoshop, but when you're working on a browser, you have to be pretty conscious of your your memory load. And then I'm going to close some of my other programs. Anything I don't need open. All right, and hopefully that will help everything to to run more smoothly. Okay, so I will continue to play with the colors in the next video and then kind of balance them all out.
and then maybe add some special effects.